Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about Fahrenheit 451 written by Ray Bradbury. Now, before we go into the summary and analysis of this novel, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, Fahrenheit 451 um, presents to us a world that is really not like ours. Um, the people that we meet in Fahrenheit 451 they basically don't think for themselves. They basically become puppets. In the world that Fahrenheit 451 um, depicts, um, we see the human race. You know, you can't think for yourself. Um, books are are illegal, illegal, illegal. Um, this book, um, the the society in this book, the government in this book, kind of treats books like narcotics. Like if you have um, books, they will come after you, they will hunt you down, they, you know, you will be prosecuted, you will, they will go after you if you have books within this realm, within this world of Fahrenheit 451. Um, so they take it very seriously, um, and they kind of flip a concept that is very um, unanimous in the world, um, and that, that concept that's universal, that's unanimous, that everybody is used to, is the, the idea that Firemen are here to help us, that firemen are here to protect the public. Um, you know, when you see firemen, when you see a fire truck, you know that, you know, they're working to put out a fire to save people's lives, um, to save um, buildings, to save infrastructure. Um, you know, firemen are or just the, the systematic construction of, of what firemen represent and what firehouses and fire engines represent. Um, they're kind of, you know, somewhat um, society heroes because in the world they've always been there to save people, to protect people, to to protect everyone from fires. Um, but in the book, in Fahrenheit 451, that kind of gets flipped around. And the firemen are not there to protect, they're not there to serve, they're not there to save they're there to destroy knowledge and to burn books. So when there is a fire call, when firemen go out into the field, they go out to find books. If somebody calls in and says, you know, we've seen books, somebody's hiding books in their attic or somebody's doing this and that, the firemen will literally show up, burn the books and, and even like burn the whole house down. So it's very, um, it's very different. They don't carry... Um, hoses they're not there with water trying to put out fires they're they're bringing fires like they have fire blasters and they're there to burn things so it's very it's a very different and unusual concept and when you first start reading this book it just seems very unusual so in this society there's a lot of technology everything is is very different from the 20th from the 21st century you know you have robot dogs and big screen, um, highly functioning televisions, um, the internet, and different types of, of online services. It's a very futuristic society. Um, and in this society, um, the government wants everybody to kind of like have the same train of thought. Um, they don't really want people to think independently or to develop original thoughts. That's why they're burning books. That's why they're burning all types of text. They just want people to um, listen to what they have to say through um, televised programming and for everybody to be on, in the same mindset. So the way that in the 21st century, we have like Democrats and Republicans and all types of house, house parties and, and um, election parties and all that kind of theories and concepts and, you know, different types of cohorts that, that have different views about government and philosophy that's all out the window within Fahrenheit 451. It's all about um, having the unanimous, universal one thought for the entire society. And we meet Guy Montag in this world, and he basically, he's married um, to this woman by the name of Mildred, and he's his life is not happy. He's a fireman, and he's, you know, he's working his mon mundane job. He goes to work, and you know, he burns books. He doesn't question anything. He's been in this society for pretty much his life. And he's just, you know, burning books, burning things down. He does his job, doesn't ask any questions about it. And he's not happy. He's just, you know, he doesn't think for himself because he's a product 
of the society that he lives in. His wife is boring and they don't have kids. So it's pretty much burning books, living with his wife. You know, it's a it's a pretty bleak existence for Guy Montag and he's just, you know, he's just going through it. The thing that changes is that he meets this girl by the name of Clarice, this, this next door neighbor of his, that kind of shows him a different side to the world, that shows him curiosity, that shows him um, a different way, different perspectives of how to see the world, how to look at the world, how to live through the world. And at this point, through meeting Clarice, um, Guy Montag, he starts to think for himself. He starts to think about why is he burning books? Why is this society so, um, so, you know, unusual to the point where he doesn't really even know his wife. His wife just seems like a stranger to him. Like there's not even real love between them because it's just, they're just products of what the society is feeding them and they just do whatever their society says. So he kind of like listens or adheres to Clarice's philosophy towards life and um, her direction towards life of trying to experience and, and looking at life in different ways. Um, but then the sad thing that happens is Clarice dies. She gets hit by a car and she dies. So, you know, that's kind of a bummer. That's something that kind of really affects him because she, Clarice was like the, the first person that he, that he met that kind of put some color into the world for him. For Guy Montag, from my perspective, I would imagine that the world just looked very bleak to him until he met Clarice and then she, she dies and um, he basically turns to st um, stealing books. Now, again, books are illegal in Fahrenheit 451, very illegal, very illegal. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, he just starts taking them from, like, when they call the fire trucks and when I say fire trucks, I mean actual, they're bringing the fire. So it's not, it's not a water truck like we have in 2020 and the 21st century and the time before that, you know, the fire trucks are not carrying water. I'm going to make that clear. They're not carrying water. They're carrying fire. So... Guy Montag, when they call um, his fire station um, in for these calls, for these house calls, um, he starts to steal books and he starts to bring them back to his house. Um, and at some point, he actually reveals this to his wife. His wife is actually very mad when he first um, shows her the books. And, you know, he kind of like pushes her to read the books with him. And she's very uncomfortable. She's she gets bored actually. She's not really um, into them. And they try to get along with it. They try to um, you know live with it. But she she's very mad. She doesn't um, trust Guy Montag anymore. And Mildred is just like she just can't do it. And to her, the way that um, Mildred is looking at Guy Montag in this book when he reveals the books to her, it's pretty much like. You know, he just pulled out a chest full of, you know, banned things or illegal material. It's like, it's almost like he pulled out a bomb and said, here's what I got from work and let's enjoy it together. Or it's like he pulled out, you know, think about the worst thing that someone could pull out to you in this society and in a society or in the world that we live in right now. Think about the worst thing that somebody can bring home to you and present it to you as if we should enjoy it together. That pre that's pretty much, from Mildred's perspective, that's pretty much what Guy Montag does. He just comes home and brings a book. Oh my God, a book? So they, they pretty much start to drift apart after this. Um, I, the, the next significant thing that happens in the book um, after all of this is um, Guy Montag meets this man, this professor, um, he used to be like a English a literature professor at some point in his life, but pretty much doesn't have a job anymore since this society in Fahrenheit 451, they hate books. He's pretty much out of a job and he still loves books. He still loves literature, you know, to, to a person that loves books, um, you know, this book is tough. Like the, the concept is tough. You know, I, I enjoy a good book here and there and, I love the concepts and ideas and experiences that are recorded in books to imagine that you live in a world where you can't read a character development and you can't read about, you know, different things that a person would go through through literature. Um, 
you know, because the, the thing that's very significant about books is in books, you can give characters more details. You can um, make characters um, express themselves more and um, you can explore the character a little bit more in television and film. You can do that too, but at the same time, it's it's just not the same thing. Um, and so this literature professor, um, him and Guy Montag, they kind of, on the low side, they start talking about books. They start, um, you know, thinking about if the world was perhaps different. Um, and this is all illegal. You're not supposed to be talking to people. And, and keep in mind, everybody in this society has earpieces where they keep in contact with each other. Um, there's all types of crazy technology. This world is entirely consumed. This world in, in Fahrenheit 451, it's entirely consumed by technology and pretty much obliviousness. Everybody's just, you know, paying attention to their screens. Um, and so Guy Montag, while he was out, he actually, later in the novel, like closer to the end of the novel, he actually gets a call um, from his fire department and they say that they're there they found books and somebody somebody's been hiding books in their house and so he goes to work and he ends ends up at his own house and his wife turned him in and pretty much she just tells him yeah we're, we're done um it's almost like they pretty much get divorced at this point like the book doesn't really go, go into that but the way that his wife was looking at him um, from since the first day that he showed um, her the books um, it, it was pretty much over. So she she goes off on her own. They didn't have any kids. They didn't have anything else between them. So she's she books it. She's out. Um, he basically has to face um, Beatty, who is this fire chief, this fire captain that is pretty much the antagonist within the novel and um, several points throughout um, the novel Beatty's kind of like keeping a close eye on Guy Montag because he saw that Guy Montag was interested in in, in books. Um, there there is there is even this one scene where um, Beatty um, catches Guy Montag and tells him to to read a little bit on the books, and he does this to kind of like get Guy Montag um, off of his curi curiosity and and you know step away from his curiosity. But when he sees that Guy Montag won't step away from it. You know, won't leave it alone. Um, closer to the end of the book, what Beatty basically does, um, he makes Guy Montag burn his own books. Um, so that's not enough for Beatty, for Captain Beatty. He actually antagonizes and antagonizes and pushes and pushes Guy Montag to the point where um, Guy Montag uses his, his flame machine or flame um, blazer and kills captain Beatty. so all these firemen are there burning books burning guy montag's books and you know he gets pushed too much over the edge and guy montag kills Beatty, and then he's basically off of off on the run um he grabs as many books as he can he's off on the run and he's trying to leave this society this city um and he successfully he like successfully gets out of the city he gets out of this society and he actually meets a band of outsiders, a band of people who, you know, also love books, who didn't want to give books up. And they're basically roaming um, in just this perilous, this endless kind of like a wasteland where there's no society, there's no infrastructure and they're just trying to survive. And they've memorized books. They're like, you know what? We're tired of these people burning our books in this society, this government destroying our books we're gonna memorize them they can't you know they can't burn them um in our minds which it's it's a, somewhat of a good plan but at the same time the government could still kill you so it, it, that the novel doesn't go into that but that was just my own perspective when i was reading the novel it's like yes you memorized it yes that is a good plan if they burned the books it wouldn't matter to you but at the same time if you start spreading your ideas from the books in the society, they will just terminate you. So Guy Montag meets with them and, you know, he learns a lot from them. And they basically tell him that the city, this society that he was in, it's about to be destroyed. And at the end of the novel, it pretty much gets destroyed by an atomic bomb because supposedly the city throughout the whole novel was at war. 
the book doesn't really focus on this war. We just know that they're for, like pretty much forever at war. Um, we don't really focus on their enemy too much. And at the end, the cities get it gets destroyed. And then the outsiders that Gan Montag is with, there's a good number of them. And they're like, all right, we're going to go back to the city, to the remains of the city, and um, rebuild it with the knowledge that we have, with the intelligence that we have in create a new thriving society based on intelligence and the love of books. So, hey, maybe they'll create a society that's, if you don't read books, you're out. So that's how the novel ends, and that's Fahrenheit 451. So let's go into the analysis and talk uh, about the deeper meanings within Fahrenheit 451. So Fahrenheit for, um, 451 is a dystopia... Um, it's very interesting. Like for me, I, I love a good book. Again, I love a good book. I love reading a good book. There's just so much you can learn about um, the world through a good book without leaving your own home. Um, there's a lot of, because the reason why I say that is there's a lot of character development and a lot of world building in novels that help you understand people's thought processes. And the, the authors that write books, they do try to create characters that represent real life individuals. And um, you could see that Guy Montag, if he was a real person, um, the ideas and thoughts and beliefs and experiences that, that he goes through, it, it's something that you could see a real human being go through. And as, as a person reading this book, you can take a lot from him and the world he lives in and how he processes um, and how his his boredom and his unhappiness plays a part in in how those decisions and those um, aspects of his life affect his decisions. Um, if you know if Guy Montag was living a happy life in the society, if his wife wasn't so bland and bleak, um, if his job wasn't so boring and and lifeless, he you know he maybe he would have sided with his government or sided with his society and lived there happily. But the fact that there is no self-expression, there's no independence, there's no original thoughts, um, you know, you pretty much become a cog in the machine and you got to do what you're told to do. Um, so from there, we can we can assume that, you know, in a society, if you don't have the ability to think and explore ideas and explore concepts, um, you know, you can become unhappy you can become unsatisfied with the life that you live you know in the 21st century and in the time of the past people can you know people created art people created all types of entertainment all types of literature all types of different types of things where people can express ourselves from my perspective and, and from a lot of people's perspective human beings were extremely creative everyone like some people say that they're not creative and they're not um you know good at creating things that that demonstrate how they're creative but that's completely untrue everyone even even if you're not a painter or, or, or a writer or um, a creator of some sort you are still creative because you create things that 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 are significant to you the way that you you decorate your house the way that you decorate your room the way that you set up your room you know you add in a little bit of your own identity in it the way that you write, the way that you speak, the way that you express yourself, you know, you add in your own original thoughts and your own original being in that. In the society that Guy Montag lives in, he's just basically a copy of all the other firemen. They all pretty much burn books, go to work, come home, you know. Most of them probably don't have kids because this society, it seems like everybody just lives a bleak life. No one seems to care about anyone, even... Mildred and Guy Montag, they don't seem to be in love. They're married, but it seems like their life is just life and they just live. And they're like roommates almost at the novel. It's like they're just people living together. So there's no passion. There's no real emotion. It's just, you know, there's no conflict. And that's what the government wants in this novel, for there to be no conflict. Um, and so without any conflict, without any, any passion, without any emotion... You basically get rid of the the human experience, right? Um, the human experience on this earth that all humans go through is, 
you know, the struggles, the, the, the things that make us happy, the things that make us sad, the, the things that make us want to be better, um, all of those things combine into one to make uh, the human experience. And for a lot of people, when you don't have the ability to express yourself through the human experience, life just becomes meaningless and life just becomes boring and you just want more. And that's the thing that always comes up in dystopias and even utopias because when when everything is perfect it often creates you know this world of this world that just doesn't have any excitement or passion in it because yes human beings we don't you know violence is bad yes um we say all these things are bad but at the same time the things that make the headlines the things that that grab our attention are the weird things you know whenever you're 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 watching the news and there was like a, a multi-car pile up you're not going to change the channel you want to see what happened whenever there's like a fight somewhere you're not going to change the channel you're going to watch it that's why you know we pay so much money to white to watch sports and fights and you know if there is peace everywhere if everybody has the same thought if we lived in a world where everything was exactly perfect exactly normal a lot of people would be depressed and unhappy because essentially all humans like conflict and we try to make it as safe as possible so that we can enjoy it. I mean, look at boxing. We put gloves on people and we tell them to hit each other and we get happy because we love to see a good fight, no matter what culture, no matter where you are, you know? Um, so that's my, those are my thoughts on Fahrenheit 451 very interesting book. Um, I wish that they didn't burn books because I, I love, again, I love a good book. But those are my thoughts about it. Um, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.